You guys have been requesting it like crazy. So over the past couple of weeks, I've been playing with the Ichimoku Cloud Indicator. So many of you guys have asked me to make a video on this, and I wanted a better understanding of it before I presented it to you guys so that it's easily digestible because this thing is not really easy to look at. But once you understand what each part of it means, it can help you get better entries and potentially hold trades for longer. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the Ichimoku Cloud. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name's Artie, and this is The Moving Average, a show where we discuss everything day trading to keep you profitable on a consistent basis. Uh, let's just get right into the charts because I can't explain this with hand motions. So after playing with this for quite some time, this is how the Ichimoku cloud indicator looks. That is how you spell Ichimoku, and you're gonna go with this first one right here under technicals. What I suggest doing just to keep it more simplified is actually actually remove the lagging span. That is this green line right here. So essentially what you're left with is the conversion line, the baseline, leading span A and leading span B. Let's get into each one of those. So the Ichimoku cloud indicator is comprised of five different lines. Two of them make up the cloud, which is either red or green, showing bullish and bearish momentum. So this is a breakdown of what the lines are. This blue line right here is called the conversion line. It is a nine period average. Think of moving averages, just more precise. The red line right here is known as the baseline and it is a 26 period average. Then you start getting into the cloud. So this line right here is span B and this bottom line right here in a downtrend is span A. When the cloud reverses and goes green, span A is on top and span B is on bottom. Span B is essentially a 52 period average. Span A, however, is the baseline plus the conversion line divided by two. If you want the exact calculations of every single line, they are right here. It's not necessary to understand the calculation. It's just important to understand why these work together to push and or pull the price. So what I'd like to do right now is talk about the cloud. The cloud leads the price action by 25 bars. You can see that right here. The current price is right here and 25 bars ahead is where this cloud ends. What I want you to do is think of this cloud as a barrier. The thicker the cloud, the stronger the barrier, the thinner the cloud, the easier it is to go through. So right now you can clearly see a fat ass rejection off of this cloud because it is so thick. Price is using this as a resistance area. Came up to test it, pushing it back down because this cloud is too thick. You can see right here as the cloud is thinner, price is able to notch in a little bit more but still uses it as a downtrend. I'm gonna get into that later in this video because I called out a signal on my Telegram group which did not play out last night, and I'm gonna explain why. The Ichimoku Cloud is really, really good for strong, long movements. If you think about this cloud as support and resistance, it does the exact same thing. So clearly seeing a bunch of price rejection up here, and again, clearly seeing a bunch of price rejection here. Thin cloud means less momentum. Thicker cloud means more momentum. So as the conversion line and the baseline drop below the cloud, pushing the price down, you're getting that nice bearish momentum. Watching that play out, you can see it's broken out of that consolidation range that it was in with these thin clouds. And as the cloud leads, it starts to slope downwards, giving you a heavier indication that the trend will continue down. At that point, you have that separation of the baseline and the conversion line below the Ichimoku cloud and breaking that level of support. And what you can do for your price targets is actually just look left to see where that Ichimoku cloud had that rejection area. That is the next layer of previous support. So if you're wondering how that looks in the opposite direction, this cloud would be green, the blue line on top, and the red line underneath that. Once again, conversion line is blue, baseline is red, and span A and B are the cloud. So what I'd like to do for just a second is explain the GBPUSD trade that I called out last night. Right here, 
and right here we were making lower lows. As you can see right here and right here, we were making higher lows. That right there is a divergence. I saw that divergence along with a break in a trend line. And right here on this candle is when I got in. That's what my trade looked like. Take profit at 35,700 and stop loss at 35,300. And I said it's super dangerous to counter trend trade because it's like catching a falling knife. But I only risked 1% on the trade, so it was fine. I was assuming that since the cloud thinned out, it would be easier for price to go through, especially after seeing the divergence. I also want to touch on stop losses for just a second. Stop losses are not meant to like be, you know, this is how much I'm willing to lose. It's an indication of my analysis was wrong. At what point am I so wrong that the price is not going to respect that and completely invalidate all of my analysis? That point for me was right here. On the Telegram group, I said, if it breaks this level, it's gonna go down to the next support and resistance area at 1.35 flat. The price rejected off the Ichimoku cloud. The cloud turned red. The baseline and the conversion line were both below the cloud and it continued to cascade down like crazy, as you can see right here, invalidating my analysis and making the trade go against me. That is the risk you take when counter trend trading. It's so much easier to trade with the trend. I went to sleep at about 10 o'clock, so had I been awake at 3.40 something a.m., I could have taken the reverse position, but I was in a coma. So how can you use the Ichimoku cloud indicator to help you with your entries or to help you with the direction of the trade that you wanna take? What you can do is take any asset that you're trading, like GBPUSD, and draw horizontal lines across areas of support and resistance. That is strictly just looking at where the price has rejected the most, and those are gonna be your targets. Now that's gonna give you your major support and resistance levels, then you can take it down to the one hour time frame and get some minor ones in, areas where the price crossed a lot, but what you can do is change the color to something more neutral, letting you know that there's smaller levels, one above and one below the current price. This is multi time frame analysis. It's extremely important, especially when getting those big moves. Then you can take it down to the 15 minute or the five minute and then toss on the Ichimoku cloud. Seeing the price move away from this area of resistance should give you an indication that it will move to the next level of support. The reason that this was my call right here last night was because we had a previous level right here where the price rejected and shot up. Once it broke through that level, my analysis was void and it was game over until the next zone. Keeping in mind this huge bank level of an even number 1.35. So basically what I'm saying is don't get into a counter trend trade if all of these things are pushing the price down. If however the trend is going down and the price is breaking through the cloud and dancing in it, wait till it's comfortably trading above with the conversion line, the baseline, and the cloud all below the price then you can target the next support and resistance zone. I'm probably gonna do a follow-up video to this because it's so complicated, but if you guys got a general understanding of what I'm talking about here and explaining the Ichimoku cloud, let me know in the comment section down below. If you would like to learn more about those support and resistance areas and drawing up trend lines, please watch this video next. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, you got some value out of it, you like the way that I teach, make sure you're dropping a like to support the algorithm and me mentally and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.